All right, I thought I was done with the molecular orbital diagrams, but then I forgot about O2, 2 minus. This is actually the peroxide polyatomic anion and is stable, spoiler alert. But let's draw the molecular orbital diagram for it to demonstrate why. Well, each oxygen brings six valence electrons with it, 2s2, 2p4. That makes for 12 valence electrons total, plus two extras for the minus two charge. That makes 14 valence electrons that we have to fill this molecular orbital diagram up with. Now, O2 and F2 and Ne2 have a molecular orbital diagram where the sigma 2p bonding orbital is lower in energy than the pi 2p molecular bonding orbital. That's because oxygen, fluorine, and neon have more protons in the center. They actually have smaller atomic radii than nitrogen, carbon, boron, beryllium, and lithium for which these are switched. Long story short, this is the MO diagram for O2, F2, and Ne2, as long as you put the proper number of electrons in. Speaking of which, 14 electrons. Let's go bottom up. Thank you, Aufbau. And let's spread them up before we double them up. Thank you, Hund. 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That's 14 electrons. Let's calculate the bond order for this species. It is the number of electrons in bonding orbitals. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Minus the number of electrons in antibonding orbitals. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Divided by 2. That makes 2 over 2, which is 1. Which means that in the O2, 2 minus species, there is a stable single bond. I'd like to point out that because all of the electrons here are paired, O2, 2 minus is a diamagnetic species. And because I can, I'd like to draw you the Lewis structure for O2, 2 minus. It is a single bond between two oxygen atoms, and each one has a formal charge of minus one. That's why they add to minus two. You might recognize this as the center piece of hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. But more importantly, this is the MO diagram. We are done. And there you go. All right, best of luck.